Hi, my name is Mitsuko Brooks and I am a male artist living in New York City in the neighborhood of Ridgewood, Queens. I've been making nail art for over 20 years. I'm shocked it's been that long. I can trace back the beginnings of how I started making nail art and I would say it, um, it was really tied to the fact that my family would move around quite often during my entire childhood, um, moving every three to seven years. And so the biggest move was um, when we left Albany, Oregon, where we had been living for seven years, to move to Aviano Air Force Base to live off base. And it was, um, like a beautiful place to live and you know to move but as a child um, wanting to be close to her friends and have the sense of time to a place it did not make me that happy and um, and I think I just have like a predisposition to feeling sad so um, I started writing letters to my friends back in Albany, Oregon, and we got really into our letter writing because we were dorks. And I would collage those letters. Um, and then um, my sister around 1996 um, introduced me to zines. And so I made my own. Um, black and white Xerox that I Xeroxed at the base library and um, started sending it off to the people. Fact Sheet 5 um, would list like names and addresses and if you could trade or sell your zine. So I would do a lot of the trades. And I formed this, um, this group of friends and we would write um, depressing letters about how sad we were. Um, and we would all get really into collaging um, and making really beautiful mixtape covers and the envelopes and the letters. And so that was like, that just brought me a lot of joy. And I felt um, I had this group of people that I could really tell how I felt and I was dealing what I didn't know then because I didn't know how to talk about these things was I was dealing with a lot of um, depression and social anxiety issues um, and I didn't yeah and so making mail art and writing these letters and getting a response and the back and forth um, it just like really helped me feel okay and not alone. And um, that is also something that I have, that I still struggle with in my life as an adult and mail art really helps like combat that. I was introduced to Ray Johnson and the mail art movement. And that was just like really exciting. Um, to, to imagine that something I had been doing that I saw very separate, because I had my male art that I just did with my friends to feel happy, and then I had my painting and drawing practice, and um, to find out that this male art actually like existed in the fine art um, history, and um, I don't know, it was just very inspiring. And then also years later, finding out about Gutai, the Japanese movement, and that male art was a big part of that. And I feel like as years, as time goes on, and I didn't know it then, but I feel like I'm drawing upon like that history um, and it validates like what I'm doing because I always, minimize what I'm doing and thinking that it's not good enough. Um, and so, yeah, so I started sending mail art to my best friends from art school, during school, and then after graduating, just 
just always doing that. Some lived like a 30 minute train ride away. Um, some had moved away. Some stopped making art and they, they operated as gifts. There was no monetary exchange, um, which has changed over time because it's been hard to pay bills and survive. And so now I'm thinking I have asked people to donate between 50 and $100 um, for me to send them mail art as a way to like give to myself and my time and um, as the time went on I also started sending mail art to complete strangers or artists I admired um, and so it kind of broadened out from like my partners and my best friends and the network got bigger and lately it's been I've been trying to reconnect with these amazing pan-asian Asian-american people that I met in Los Angeles and that I feel like I don't have this strong Asian American community here in New York City, um, which sounds ironic, but I don't. And so it's a way for me to feel like I have Asian American and Japanese American friends that, yeah, it's really important for me. And I like that I can use my mail art for that. Um, so another part, so the substrate of my mail art is always a book cover, 99% of the time. Sometimes I'll use a microwavable instant rice package. Um, yeah, so I worked in a library um, as a student shelver at the Cooper Union Library. And um, I went on and you know kept working there for over 10 years. And so they would rebind the books that were falling apart and they would rip off the book covers and they would throw them out or put them on the giveaway truck. And so I would just collect these beautiful old covers and um, that became the base for the mail art. And so I would do the to and from, I would write a typewritten letter or I would do a text painting or a collage and then send it to someone. And um, the act of going to the post office brings me great joy. I feel like it's uh, meditative or it gets me to kind of check myself because um, I have to wait in line and there are all these rules and I feel able to follow those rules. And the postal workers sometimes get a kick out of it. Um, sometimes they don't care. And sometimes they say it should be put in an envelope. And, um, and then when it gets the postmark, it's like finalized and when the person receives it, the piece is finished. And then I ask people to um, make a scan of both sides and send it to me. So then I have like a documentation of the finished piece. That's pretty much the story of my mail art. Um, if you have any questions or comments, like please get in contact with me. Um, you can follow me on Instagram or send me a DMs. Thank you so much for visiting my mail.